This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I keep clapping now. Sounds good. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, that sounds so good. That's called clapping on the back feet. All right, sing this real quiet with me now. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. wonderful day. Thank you for everything you've given me. Uh, let's hope everyone else's day is wonderful. In Jesus' name, amen. The final plague had the Egyptians scared, and they urged the Israelites to leave quickly. The Hebrews gathered their belongings and livestock and left Egypt with great rejoicing. To make their departure even sweeter, as this massive sea of men, women, children, and flocks and herds of livestock made their way out of Egypt, the Egyptians loaded them down with incredible treasure. Their centuries of slavery had come to an end. God delivered his people just as he had promised. God led the Israelites out into the desert wilderness. While on their journey, God cared for his people. To help them find their way, he led them in the daytime as a pillar of cloud. During the night, he appeared as a pillar of fire. These columns not only gave the Israelites direction, but also comfort. The pillar of cloud protected them from the harsh rays of the sun, and the pillar of fire kept them warm through the cold desert nights. After the Hebrews left, Pharaoh changed his mind and said, What have we done? We let the Israelites go and have lost their services. Pharaoh commanded that his chariot be made ready, and he summoned more than 600 of his best chariots and officers. As he and his charioteers rode off, Pharaoh's entire army marched behind him. All of Egypt's military was in pursuit of the Israelites. As Pharaoh's armies got near, the Israelites caught sight of them and began to panic. They quickly turned on Moses and asked him, why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in the desert? But Moses stood firm and called upon his fellow Israelites to do the same. Fear not, and see the salvation the Lord will bring you today. You will never see these Egyptians again, for the Lord shall fight for you. Moses stretched his hand over the sea. 
and the Lord sent a strong wind that drove back the waters until they were parted, leaving a dry path straight through the middle. All the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea, walking on dry land with towering walls of water on both sides. After the Israelites had made some way through, Pharaoh's entire army followed them on the path the Lord had made through the middle of the sea. When Pharaoh's army had made it midway through the sea, the Lord threw the Egyptians into confusion and panic. Their chariot wheels, clogged with mud, fell off or got stuck. The Egyptians began to cry out in terror, Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord fights for them and against us. Once all the Israelites had made it across safely, the Lord had Moses stretch his hand out across the sea again, and walls of water collapsed, crashing down in huge waves upon the Egyptians. Not a single Egyptian who went into the sea survived. After this mighty display of the Lord's power, the Israelites trusted him and Moses as his servant. God had freed them from slavery and from the attacking Egyptian army. Overjoyed, Moses and all the people of Israel began to sing praises to the Lord. The people sang, I will sing my heart out to God. What a victory! He has thrown horse and rider into the sea. God is my strength. God is my song. God is my salvation. I will praise him always. Through this mighty act of deliverance, God set the Israelites free. The Lord would be their God, and they would be his people. Good morning again, everybody. I'm so glad to see you again with us at Kids Kingdom. And we have another really cool craft today because as you saw in our video, there was this really magical moment where Moses parted the Red Sea. It took a lot of power. So we're gonna make our very own Red Sea, which is really interesting. So I need two pieces of paper. I have one blue, one orange, but whatever colors you have is fine. If you don't have blue paper, you can color it in blue. I also have my glue stick, a party glue stick, and I have my scissors. Good, be careful with your scissors. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut my blue paper in half the long way. So I'm gonna take one of these long pieces of paper and I'm gonna fold a little piece of it all along the edge here that's gonna help us later. And I'm gonna do the same with the other one. Very nice. So now I'm gonna take this paper and I'm gonna cut slits across all the way down. Okay, so now I have these little strips of paper along the sides. So I'm going to glue my blue pieces of paper at the edge of my orange piece of paper so that I have all these little um, waves, basically. So now as you can see, we have a wall of water on one side 
and I'm gonna repeat with the other piece of blue paper. And now just like that, we have our very own walls of water that everyone can walk through just like the Israelites. Hi, I'm Noel Jerez. I'm six years old and this is Puppy. Oh, he said, why do I call him Puppy? Because when I first, when I was five, I named him that because I really wanted to call him Puppy because that's really actually what I call him. So, so I like to play with Puppy a lot and go outside with him, but my mom and my dad don't let me, so it's okay because I will I will keep him inside when when it's night. I'll always snuggle up with him and when I sleep and let him go, I'll find him and sleep with him again. And I really, really want to keep Puppy for a whole time. Oh, and please watch Kids Kingdom on YouTube. And please watch every single Sunday. one body and one spirit just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call there is one
Jesus lived in a town on the shores of a big lake called the Sea of Galilee. It was a fishing village. One day, as Jesus was walking down the shore of the lake, he saw two men in a boat. Like many of the village, these were fishermen. They were tossing their nets into the water for a catch of fish. Their names were Simon and Andrew. Come, follow me, Jesus called out to the men. I will make you fishers of men. Would they come? Would they really leave their nets, their boat, and maybe the fish they just caught? Didn't they have jobs, goals, dreams? But without even hesitating, Simon and Andrew got up, left their nets and jobs behind, and followed Jesus. Then Jesus, Andrew, and Simon, also called Peter, continued walking along the shoreline. There in the distance, they saw three men in a boat, fixing their fishing nets. These men were James, his brother John, and their father Zebedee. When Jesus called them, they responded. Immediately, John and James dropped their fishing nets, jumped out of the boat, and left their father Zebedee. Jesus' call was profound, and though they had never met him, God's power enabled them to respond to his call. These ordinary fishermen were embarking on a journey that would change their lives forever. Jesus could have called any person of stature or leadership, but instead he called lowly fishermen. He knew that God's power would be greatly displayed in these ordinary men. In a few years, they would become the messengers to spread the gospel to all the nations of the world. A great task indeed. In the end, Jesus chose 12 disciples. These men would be scholars, learning from Jesus for the next three years. He would teach them about God, obedience, and love. He would explain to them why his coming was so important. Their sole aim would be to proclaim Jesus as the Messiah, him crucified and resurrected. The names of the 12 disciples were Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. Hey kids, happy Sunday. I'm back, so let's get to it. Uh, I want to start with some stretching, so let us stretch, okay? So put your hands out, bring your uh, left hand all the way to the right, and your right hand behind it, and just push or pull. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, do the other arm, straight, right, left. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, all right, now let's do your neck. All right, let's go to the right. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. We're going to circle. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, the other way. Four, three, two, one. Good. All right, uh, let us stretch our legs. All right, so bring your right leg up and be like, to balance yourself, hold out to something. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. All right, let's take this break. I learned something from Mr. Jamie. I like how he pauses in the middle just to uh, review. So let us review. What do we learn today? In the Old Testament, we learned uh, how God rescued the Israelites from Pharaoh, right? He used uh, Moses and his brother Aaron to do amazing miracles. And one of them was crossing the Red Sea. So what happened when they crossed the Red Sea? The water opened, right? And uh, that, that is just an amazing, amazing miracle that God did. And all the Israelites crossed and uh, they were safe from Pharaoh, right? And um, I like to imagine that maybe some of the Israelites when they were crossing the Red Sea, you know, they look left, they look right, and they saw huge walls of water. I like to think that some of them started running to the shore, right? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run. 
and we're gonna run for 20 seconds. All right, so let's count down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good, all right. Let's also, so when they reached the shore, they were overjoyed, right? And uh, some of them even sang songs. Um, and some of them even probably clap, right? So we're gonna do some jumping jacks and clap at, and at the top. We're gonna do 10 of them. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, all right, so what do we learn in New Testament? Okay, we learned that uh, Jesus chose the 12 disciples, right? And they were on school, ordinary men. They weren't, they didn't have status, uh, they didn't have a career, they were just fishermen, some of them, right? And uh, they became very, very powerful. They changed the whole world. And Jesus looked at their heart and their willingness, right? And uh, that was the lesson for today. Hope uh, I'm out of breath. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, but I uh, hope you guys have a great Sunday. Bye-bye now. It's time to memorize. Luke 6, verse 12 and 13. One of those days... Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Luke 6, verse 12 and 13. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. <laughs>